Hello and welcome to episode 47 of the QDR Crusaders for May 21st, 2013. This week, we have a special guest for you guys. Yeah. Yay! So, along with the special <laughs> guest, we also have me, of course. My name is Raymond Plasma. Um, I'm the organizer and editor of this. Aww. <laughs> oh, that was rude. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Thank you, Dad. Can you play some sad violin music, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we, well, I'll, I'll put on some sad violin music here. That was, that was cruel. Okay. I'm the organizer and editor of this podcast. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have to take and this. And then I'm Burn to One, and I'm the special <laughs> guest coordinator and also the editor for the podcast. And I'm AppleGuy317, and I'm the art coordinator. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't do it. I'm, I'm FluttyGuy317. And. No, uh, don't have a reaction. Damn it, we almost made it through it. It's too late. Who are you thinking <sighs> of? Hated by everyone. <laughs> well, we're off to a great start. <laughs> a very, like, self loathing, loathing episode. <laughs> Suppose that would make me the uh, extra special guest uh, late customer? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> and we're also joined by late yes. customer today. Heavens yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, well, this is the QDR Crusaders, and we all hate each other. But late customer's here. Late uh, customer's going to bring the show out of the ground. So, by the way, thanks again for joining us, late customer. Yeah. Sure, no problem. My pleasure. What a strange <laughs> yeah, start right. to a strange podcast. <laughs> so yeah, um, we have late customer on this week, which um, is really awesome because uh, we were planning on having a late customer on for a while. Um, and I do want to take a second here to talk about um, this because late customer, if people are not aware, um, we can just get this out of the way. Late customer, you made a couple pieces of fan art for us. Yes, um, I did. And you submitted it for the, uh, at least the first one, for the uh, fan art episode that we did back in January. Um, and so I, I just wanted to address something because um, we've had multiple people uh, ask us and request us to do interviews with people, some of the people who sent us in some fan art uh, back in January. And um, don't worry, we're planning some of those things. You know, a lot of the people who sent us in fan art are wonderful artists we'd love to have on the show. Um, but with certain topics like that, we need to be a little bit more planned and organized and just in general, like uh, just more thought put into it than, say, you know, inviting JJ on, you know, that's kind of, you know, that should, that should go without saying that we could just do that. But um, we want to, we want to make sure that for every single person that we have on, who is also a fan of our show, that we make it different and special uh, and uh, things like that. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why we might be taking longer for yeah. these kind of guests. Plus we do have, um, yeah, you're very special late customer. <laughs> <laughs> Plus we do have a list of guests also uh, like lined yes. up. So I know there's, there's a lot of um, talk about getting some of these artists uh, like fan artists on the show and uh, we do want to have them so just stay tuned in due time plus late customer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah we have late customer on this week um, who is fantastic and uh, I, I it's not it's not easy to kind of transition into this so unfortunately we're gonna have to stay on this topic but late customer just as like the first <laughs> question that we always ask sure. every person even though it's like the dumbest question of all time is like who are you and what do you do for people who don't know? All right. So, yeah, uh, I'm late customer. I, uh, as far as the MLP uh, fan art goes, I, uh, you know, fell in with the show. So I just started putting together uh, pony pictures on my spare time when I wasn't drawing for uh, work purposes. Um, with that said, um, I also maintain, well, actually, I draw a uh, webcomic. Uh, it's called The uh, Adventures of uh, Dave the Dire Man. Uh, hmm. And you guys can check it out at uh, www.direman.com. That would be what uh, I would call my day job. That's cool, actually. Um, that's cool. Okay. I think that covers it. So that's your day job, as in that is what you, you know, that's what you're paid to do. That's what you do all the time, you know? That's what I do all the time. As far as payment goes, eh. <laughs> I have to supplement it with, uh, with commissions and uh, print drawings and, and all that. You know, uh, self-employed artist. Oh, okay. that's still really cool, okay. though. That's cool. Yeah. How long have you been self-employed for? Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, geez. I actually had uh, a quote-unquote real job, um, but... Uh, once that fell through, uh, 
a couple years back, I, uh, you know, I had to figure out what to do uh, with myself. So about, geez, I want to say uh, almost a year ago, I started actually venturing out into taking commissions and, and drawing for, for monies. And it's, uh, you know, that seems to be doing all right for me. So okay. yeah, about a year. I'm actually cool. really curious about your webcomic. Uh, you said it's The Adventures of Dire Man, right? Uh, Dave the Dire Man, yeah. Dave the Dire Man. Um, is it a self-based comic? Uh, no, not at all. It's uh, actually, um, it's it's the comic itself is basically uh, another uh, video game slash geekery uh, comic. Mm-hmm. The the main character happens to <laughs> to be named after the the uh, writer and the the artist. So it just kind of you know. It's, we both share the same name, so we figured, okay, the, the protagonist's name should naturally be this. Okay. That was, I was just curious about that. Not to, like, huh, cool. tell everyone your real name, not that it really matters, but I was just, like, <laughs> I was just kind of curious because there was that yeah, crossover thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's, uh, you have another person doing the writing for the... Yes. Yes. He's a, he's a great writer. That's and, cool. And great businessman, and he's actually a large reason why I am actually even... <laughs> doing any of this uh, because uh, he did actually start the comic as a means of getting me into uh, you know trying to develop my my uh, my art because if you guys check out some of the first few uh, issues of that the the art is not awful <laughs> that's a lot of times how like web comics start out is they start out like super novice and like you know the artists like very first venture out there but it's super awesome to see a lot of web comics like go through time and develop and like as the artist like develops and gains more skills the comic <laughs> also like becomes better and like more fine-tuned and it's kind of really cool to see that in certain web comics like there was a few web comics i used to follow where it's like i would go to the very first few seasons and i would skip to the last just to see like how the artist has improved and how it changed <laughs> it's a huge difference i mean look at some of the more popular ones yeah. like uh, um penny arcade if you look at oh, yeah, uh Mike's early work compared uh-huh. to what he does now, Jesus, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's huge improvement. I remember <laughs> I was actually back in like how was it? It was middle school and when I used to read like Penny Arcade, <laughs> and now, like now when you look at it, it's like oh wow, <laughs> this is this is like this is art now. <laughs> oh, middle school, huh? <laughs> like, Thanks for uh, making me feel old here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to go, <laughs> Burn. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's been a long time since Burn was in middle school right. as well, so. Oh, yeah. They have been going for yeah. a long time. It's, uh, over a decade now, That's I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> definitely been, you know, it's interesting because yeah, but... webcomics is something that isn't really a brony thing. It's not something you see a lot. I, I mean, I guess the equivalent would be these kind of like Tumblr ask blogs, wouldn't it? Yeah, the ask blogs. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would consider those yeah. webcomics. It's just, you know, they're, people just don't call them that. In a different format. Yeah, it's kind of like a different yeah. format of webcomic. It, it's really interesting because we have never had that kind of, you know, we had a little bit of it. Um, we had um, Egophiliac on with her right. Moonstuck, obviously, and mm-hmm. her kind of slice of life um, series that she's doing. Um, yeah, I would definitely consider those webcomics. She, like, turned an ask blog into more of, like, a adventure webcomic, though. Um, right, but what I'm saying is that other than yeah. that, we haven't oh, okay. had anyone even close to this kind of thing before. Not that which we is follow that is. Or even right, on, exactly. the show yeah. on the show. On the show. That yeah. was the point you were making. Okay, same page. <laughs> I mean, I, I get the feeling that, like, a lot of these Ask Tumblers, uh, the the kind of whole style is very flexible, whereas, like, with a webcomic, it's kind of a bit more strict. Like, you have panels and stuff. Like story know, sometimes, though. continuity. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the process. Uh, <laughs> Actually, would you like to tell us a little bit more about, like, uh, just what goes into making a webcomic? Uh well, as yeah. far as the uh, technical aspects uh, go, sure. Um, well, my I, I'm lucky that my my buddy handles all the uh, all the writing duties. So, you know, when it, when uh, you know he gets an idea, he puts it together and uh, sends me sends me the, the script. And it has all the uh, dialogue and instructions of what we need visually, and uh, from there and on, I just uh, you know I run them up with it. Uh, anything that needs to be um, uh, d- displayed any of the key elements that's uh that's the one thing i got to focus on but mm-hmm. uh, beyond that um I, it's up to me to figure out how i want to compose it how i want the uh, the the angle of the shot to be just uh i just start uh like uh like i would any of the other drawings uh start uh, sketching it and making it look pretty very cool so he's in response <laughs> to like all the that's continuity really cool. and keeping things you know going and thinking of funny yeah. stuff and then you do all like the visuals and the painting yeah. and coloring 
Okay, yeah, cool. he, he lets me handle all the visuals. He just has to worry about the uh, uh, the, the, the funny. <laughs> What's your buddy's name, by the way? <laughs> uh, his uh, name is uh, David Lee Yoon, um, but we uh, I just know him as D. You know, it makes things simple. Does he have like an online name? His, his online name is Voss. Voss? Yes. Okay. Now, cool. it's an interesting point because we, we usually don't ask this kind of question. We want to stray away from mostly the simple questions that every other talk show would talk about, such as, how did you become a brony? <laughs> And do you like ponies? <laughs> and who's your favorite <laughs> pony and stuff like that? We want to stray away from that usually so we don't ask those questions. But but I find it really interesting because I, I think with you more than anyone else we've had on the show, it, there's a definite kind of like history in your gallery to where you started out with your gallery and there isn't anything. There anything, any, isn't anything pony there. And then somewhere along the way, you found it out and then... You know, you started making things slowly and slowly, and then you would add more uh, style and, like, make your own style. And then until one day it started, like, picking up over and over and over again. And now your gallery, you know, is is almost exclusively nowadays is, is these ponies things. So I, I just, I'd be interested to hear a little bit about how you uh, just kind of found out and how <sighs> it has kind of played a role. Because you started out as an artist with this webcomic. But I guess, you know, ponies have become as much practice as this webcomic, right? Uh, actually, uh, yes. Um, see, for, for me, the webcomic, uh, it, it, I got to do a lot of drawing uh, of very specific things. So whatever I'm asked to, to draw, I, I do. And it's a lot of fun. And I get to, uh, you know, flex all my artistic skills on there. But I'm also on a time constraint because it's, you know, there's a deadline for it. So I have to do, mm-hmm. uh, I have to draw it in a way that uh, it, it, it looks good, but it but it's, can be done quickly. So I can't take my time with it. Um, so when I'm done with, with that, uh, anything that I'm picking up from any of the books that I, that, that I read or any of the other, uh, artists that I look at, uh, that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using the, the, the pony drawings for both practice and, and fun. Anything, uh, ranging from, from color and perspective to just, you know, line, uh, uh, line quality, a- anything that I can practice short of, you know, human, human anatomy for that. I got to, of course, do something else, but, <laughs> right. but yeah, it's, it's, it's good practice for me. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's really awesome. And, and like I was saying before, we try to avoid usually the questions like, how did you find out about the show? <laughs> but I think this would actually give quite an interesting answer considering you were into art professionally, quote unquote, um, <laughs> quote unquote yes. with the webcomic. Um, <laughs> and then you've started this up as a side thing. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience with the show? Sure. Uh, maybe at least from an artistic point of view? Oh, uh or just in, in general. general. <laughs> uh, well, let me uh, let me take the uh, how I got into it first. Um, it, it, sure. I was actually working on uh, on my on the webcomic, uh, and I had another buddy over uh, with me who was uh, just flipping around on Netflix while I was you know busy uh, busy drawing. Um, next thing I know, he goes uh, he goes silent, and I don't hear anything on the TV. So I turn over to uh, to, to look at him, and he's just staring at me. And I look at uh, at at uh, Netflix, and he has the first season of uh, My Little Pony highlighted. And I guess curiosity got the better of me, so I'm like, you know what? Do it. I'm I'm curious to see what this is all about because I've been seeing it online everywhere. <laughs> uh, next thing I know, we're on episode seven, and we haven't stopped yet. I'm like, oh, I got a comic, to finish, <laughs> but I'm ah. definitely be watching the rest of this later. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> artistically, it's, uh, well, I'm, the first thing that caught me was that, that it was really well, uh, animated and it was, uh, you know, bright and colorful that even someone with a, well, I, I'm <laughs> being colorblind, I, even I could tell that it was, uh, you know, bright colors and, and cheery and happy. So that, uh, that got my attention. And after that, I just started trying to find, uh, stills of the, uh, uh of the show. Which kind of led me onto uh, DeviantArt and finding uh, what other people were doing. So I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm going to take a stab at this myself and see what I can uh, come up with. And next thing I know, I have a gallery full of ponies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, you, you mentioned that it was like really good practice, to, like like draw ponies and stuff like that. You mentioned it doesn't help you with human anatomy, but it, like 
it uh, somewhat helps you learn anatomy of anything when you like look at something and study something. Um, I kind of mentioned that and because very happy looking through your gallery, like every piece is like a custom piece that you've made. That's you know a piece of art, and it's you have this very unique style for like your ponies, like how you draw the face, how you draw fa- like facial features, and Thank everything. You. And I mean that's one of the things I noticed, like when I used to like first go through your gallery, is that you had a very like adorable style that was like kind of unique in yours, and it was very like cartoonish as well and i feel like you maybe developed that from working on your web comic um but you're i've seen some of your sketches of like of your characters and you have like a really awesome like understanding of dynamic like poses and stuff of characters um and just ponies in general like did you develop that you should have seen me about a year ago you would not be saying that. <laughs> did you develop that over time of just like drawing <laughs> ponies in different poses or like how did you develop that like Understanding of anatomy, just in general. Okay, so actually, one of my biggest weaknesses uh, with uh, drawing anything was um, motion. You mentioned anatomy, but uh, I linked that uh, to to, to action and motion. I could not draw a a character, um, for example, throwing a punch to save my life uh, (laughs) until finally, you know, uh, after talking with, uh, with my writer buddy, he... He, uh, uh, yeah, he was pointing out that that was definitely a weakness of mine. So I just started looking at uh, all as many cartoons as I could. Um, be uh, just looking at, at um, what's called Looney Tunes, and then reading uh, Calvin Hobbes. Uh, oh, Calvin Hobbes, uh, Bill <laughs> Watterson. He 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 really knows how to draw uh, action and motion. So I just started practicing drawing uh, uh, everything I saw from those two. Uh, and anything else I can find. And before I knew it, I finally, f- I could do what uh, you guys see in the, in the pony drawings. I can, I can draw, uh, uh, people throwing a punch to save my life now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the most recent one that I really likes, like the RD landing one. Is that what uh, you're mentioning, Flutter Guy? Yes. Yeah, I was about <laughs> to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a piece that has a lot of motion in it and it looks awesome. Um, I mean, poor Rainbow Dash, but. <laughs> <laughs> I remember yeah. what episode. Did we. Did we feature that piece or mention it in an episode? Um, I think we mentioned yeah. it because of the so. process. Because there's, um, y- you have decided to do this um, for that. this and I think one more piece. But you've kind of taken this step-by-step uh, approach. Uh, you start with your rough sketch, you go to a finer sketch, yeah, line work, color base, and then have... finally the finished product. Yeah. And um, so I think we mentioned that previously because you had this really nice process to uh, go through. Yeah, I, I think that's burned what you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah I, I actually was asked uh, to. I had a few people asking me how how I do uh, these drawings, so I decided to just you know show them. Here you go, step by step. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always nice to see that. Well, for us as no, like we, an we art show, to, to be able to show other people who are just starting to draw, um, it's always nice to see the whole process and stuff. Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. As Pinky Dash was trying to say, it, w- it was actually on one of our shows. So, Pinky Dash is acting as, a, as the audience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all, all the people in the chat who maybe they're new and they think it's still live, so they'll be like, this is the episode. It's like, okay, well, we're recording, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we yeah. featured yes, it there. Yes, thank um, you. It, it's, it's a really awesome progress, though, because, uh, you know, we mentioned it many times that, um, you know, the, the process is what helps people learn. It's very hard and it's it's quite a steep learning curve for someone to say I want to draw that and looking at the finished product as opposed to looking at the step by step stuff and say look I should start here and then get to here and then you know further and further and further yeah it's, it's a lot of time a lot of practice when when I was an artist starting out and uh, I know a lot of artists in the fandom are the same way it's like you look at pieces of art or you look at the show and stuff and it's like I want to draw that like I want to end up being able to draw that but you, you know without formal art training or anything like that it's always difficult to figure out how to do that and there's a lot of good resources but a lot of times it's just nice to see how other artists do it uh, and it, I think that translates over to anything really yeah. not just art but mm-hmm. yeah so yeah it's really <laughs> cool um I also I I kind of wanted to bring up that like uh your style is very reminiscent of like a comic style. And I guess that kind of stems from you starting out with comics. Yeah. 
um just just because the line work is so Funny. like yeah it's like perfect <laughs> yeah i i definitely have a uh, uh, roots in, in mm-hmm. uh, well i'm not an animator but that's what i grew up with uh, cartoons uh, so yeah that's that's what i uh, latched yeah, onto it's all uh, black I, I, it look, looks like it's i love it's, like it's something that we brought up in the style episode I, me and ben the 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 there's just something about the the black lines that, uh, uh, that that speak to me. So yeah, that's that's what I go with. I mean, I, I tried a couple of uh, show accurate pieces and and I like them and all, but uh, I, I find myself going back to <laughs> big black lines whenever I can. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. defines your style and it defines the well, character. That's great. It defines you. Actually, yeah. um, I have a question for you. Can you go a little bit more into just line sure. work in general? Um, maybe tell tell us a little bit more about it. Because I do know that line art, um, there's kind of an emphasis on like line thickness and like movement and something like that. And something I noticed in your um, already already hard landing piece, like in, when we featured it, was that stuff that was more closer and in the foreground has thicker lines and things that recede, they go thinner. Yeah. Um, and I know that's really important when like in comic work and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, uh, when you um, w- when you have um different uh, 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 styles of, of line work. When you're not working with just black lines, you, you can use um, uh, fading colors and all that to, to denote uh, uh, what's called uh, distances. Uh, what, what do you call mm-hmm. it? Atmospheric uh, perspective. But oh, when yeah. You're, Stuff uh, like when atmosphere gets mm-hmm. in the way. Right. But when you're working with just you know black lines, uh, you need to find a way to basically differentiate foreground from background and from being able to split up uh, one object from another. So uh, yeah, the, 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 the short answer is, well, you know, big, thick black lines outline an object, and then you uh, use thin lines uh, for the details, and then, uh, you know, thick, uh, thicker lines denote uh, closer objects, while thinner lines uh, denote things at, at a distance. Um, and the, honestly, from there, you just play it by ear. You just go with what, what looks right. You, you start with uh, that very basic uh, idea and just go from yeah. there. Cool. It, it definitely shows your background in comics, because... A lot of people who start uh, drawing in the fandom or, or uh, you know, getting into art as uh, much like we did through the fandom, um, they start out with ponies and, and it's very hard for them to find their own style. Uh, a, because they're looking too hard for it <laughs> um, and not letting it come naturally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but B, because, um, you know, they, they don't have a background in anything else and, you know, they have to really find it for the first time. The, the thing that I found interesting for you was it was very evident that you did already have kind of your own style and then just applied it to ponies. Because if you look through your gallery at, at some of your earlier stuff, like you said, you, you started out with the uh, show accurate things and then you moved to trying your own style again. Once you once you decided that you liked your own style with the pony look, you kind of just kind of snapped, you know, and kind of just <laughs> fit right into there. And then everything from that point on was in your style. Yeah, actually by your DeviantArt gallery. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a I had a moment of wait a minute, why am I why am I trying so hard to do something that I don't do? Just go with what I know and yeah, from there on out that's that's all I drew. Just uh drawing from my own style. Um which oh and going off of what you were saying earlier, yeah, anyone uh, who's listening to this who's trying to quote unquote develop their own style don't. Just just draw and it'll come to you. Before you know it you'll be drawing a certain way and that'll be your style. That took me a long time to learn, but thankfully I learned it years ago, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't get to talk a lot about of like actually developing your own style and talk about like personal style in general in our style episode. We were kind of just like featuring styles we enjoyed. I would have liked to like go into that a little bit more depth, but no, that's a really, really good point. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's def- I feel like uh, a lot of artists um, who are just starting out really do try and push for like a style. Um, but I mean, if you're just starting out at art, really just try anything, I think. And then eventually you'll find something that you really enjoy or that comes easily or naturally to you. And then, you know, yeah, some people are going to gravitate too. towards, uh, you know, hyper realistic, uh, uh, drawings. Other people are going to go with very simplistic, uh, uh, cartoony styles and, you know, everyone falls uh, somewhere in between. Just, uh, uh the, the point is don't, don't try to, uh, don't try to force something, uh, when it should just come from you know from your own experiences and your own uh, you know personal tastes that it, your style will come just you know just let it come i want to bring up this piece because it's just so adorable uh it's derpy oh, and buffing okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but what's interesting about this piece versus like some of your other pieces, uh, I think there's a bit of you like blurred your lines in the background yeah, a bit. Yeah, I was actually um, experimenting with that for a showing bit. depth. And it, while it looks okay here, and I will use it uh, uh, for very specific pieces, I uh, yeah, I, I found that I, I still prefer to just use line uh, line quality and coloring to denote uh, focus. But uh, it worked out all right here. Yeah. It's kind of kind of cute because yeah. it plays with that, you know, what you would think when you are you talking about like a traditional camera or something. Um, when you have something in like back focus, that's not really like when you, when you're looking at something like eye wise, it's usually normally in focus as far as your view goes. Mm -hmm. But when as soon as you take a picture with a camera, it kind of you know it starts to have that focus blur of like. Um, but I think it play yeah it plays nicely in this piece. It kind of like. Things that are blurred are like harder to focus on, and your eye likes to focus on things that are easy and sharp, so it'll travel to easier places, you know. Yeah. So like Derby's face and how adorable <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that muffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just so cute. It's, de it's definitely an interesting thing to think about. Uh, you know, it, I I don't think the blur is necessary, but it's an interesting concept to talk about because it, it does kind of do that effectively. Now, the blur that you used was very very subtle. So to debate to debate how much of an effect it has, you know, that that might be a little bit of a debate, but yeah, definitely when like blurring things uh you know, but but you know, you're a digital artist, it isn't blurring things I I found a lot. Blurring things in general is is very hard to do. Well, it's hard to do right, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> the the issue I was having it was uh, that I was blurring it uh, when I was working on it. I had it blurred to a point where it was actually distracting. So it was actually the blur was actually <laughs> drawing uh the attention away from uh, from derby so i had to i had to dial it back quite a bit to to the point where it's as you pointed out it's it's it's, it's subtle it's not uh, I, you can tell it's blurred when you look at it but you know at a glance uh, you you might miss it mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely a balance there's definitely a balance there you know something i actually wanted to bring up was uh i really really like your sketch style just like your rough sketches i find i really enjoy you know like the rougher beginning parts of of art um like in our sketch episode when we featured a bunch of sketch artists like i feel like your sketches are right up there in quality and like how of how they're made um and it, it i don't know i don't know where where is he going with that question is more of a compliment but <laughs> <Thanks>. uh, <laughs> it's that uh do you ever find that you want to like make a sketch and you and like leave that as your final piece of art or just make sketches because like in your gallery you have a few of like i think in your gallery had two pieces of just like your start. Mm -hmm. What was it? You have um, finished, finished to rough um, examples, and that's where it shows some of, some of your sketches. But I'd really love to see just like a finalized piece that's just like sketch the so like the second part in your transition where you have like the rough under under sketch, and then you have that transition sketch. I'd love to see some pieces that are just like of that of just sketch work, and you know it's all about it's all about line work. It's all about line thickness and. Um, because like, I feel you definitely have like a real, even like in your sketches have like a real set style with that. That's really, it's really interesting, really clean cut. Um, and the commission that you did for me was actually really cool too. Oh, thank you. Um, geez, I haven't. <laughs> Bert, uh... how did you manage to sneak that in there? That's where I, <laughs> you... I, I, I snuck <laughs> that in there because that's why I first noticed it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I haven't, uh, geez, I haven't actually done just, uh, sketches as, as finished products in, in a long time. I, uh. Um, I mean, uh, years ago when I when I used to uh, draw just for fun, yeah, I would actually put a lot of effort into into just sketching. But uh, once I I uh, made the jump over to you know uh, uh, finish work with the uh, lines and colors and and all that, I, uh, I I just use it as a stepping stone to where I actually don't put in as much detail as I as I used to. Um, but you're actually giving me something to to consider. I mean, right now my sketches are either. Uh, groundwork for fringe products or or just practice hmm. maybe I, yeah maybe i should put something together i'll make a note of that <laughs> well it's like a lot of artists <laughs> you see um in their galleries they'll put like their sketch dumps or just silly things like that and it's kind of nice to see what they do you know just casually um and like as far as sketches go i only see those in your gallery as um as like you know those progression works so like you're only using it as a stepping stone um but I mean, if you have a comic background, a lot of comic artists, you know, they won't color their comics. They'll just have that line art background. Uh huh. So I was just like curious, like even not just like inked, because your step after the like finished sketch is like you ink it, 
And so, like, that's a big step of finalizing in comics as well as the um, when they ink things. Yeah. Um, but again, like, uh, I don't know. I just really enjoyed like how you would rough out rough sketch things. And it's just cool to see. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> While we're on the topic of um, suggesting things to you, have you ever done or have you ever considered uh, doing more often uh, kind of what we would call like finished sketches? Because what you've got here in your process is you've got your first two steps are your your rough sketch and then you and then your kind of uh, uh, more fleshed out sketch. Have you ever considered going one step further and making another sketch then that's just you know almost like a finished product in itself? like we've seen in many of our sketch artists that we featured before. Because right now, you're just taking the jump from that sketch into a, a digital line work. Yeah, because you have the... Like, so in the CMC airtime, um, you start with, like, the rough undersketch of just, like, the outlines of the characters, the faces, proportions, and then you get it all finite, you know, and, like, your more developed sketch. You even do a little bit of shading. You do some pencil shading, and it's, like, normally when you're doing, like, your rough sketch to develop a line work, like, artists don't even bother shading. So that's why I like your sketches so much is you take that extra time to like put it, put down some values and some shading of the characters and stuff. And it's like that right there is pretty much like a lot of people consider that to be their finished work. I mean, look at someone like Joey Darkmead or something, you know, it's just like it's all pencil work, but it's still oh, like it's really great. amazing art. So you have this really <laughs> defined, you know, line art style just like in, in pencil work. And then you go the extra step of inking it. But it'd be really cool to see um, just like more of your, you know, sketch, sketch work, pencil work. Anyway. Yeah, well, as I was saying earlier, I haven't done finished uh, sketchworks in a long time. I I would have to dig up, uh, if, I, if I still have some of my older art uh, to, to post it up. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is something to consider. Um, th- I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I got nothing. I kind of blanked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll keep it in your back pocket for yes, a rainy day. How about that? <laughs> um, just out of curiosity, uh, because you have the, the sketch and then do you do your sketching in a digital medium or is it done in a traditional medium and then do you like scan it and pen oh, over it. that it, it, digitally? On, or? on my tablet, uh, on computer, everything's digital. Okay. Including the sketches. Hmm. All right. So, um, there was something interesting that you brought up beforehand and, and you, you mentioned, uh, very briefly here, but it was something that, uh, I hope you don't mind, uh, us bringing up and kind of talking about more. Um, but you are uh, an artist who is colorblind. Uh-huh. And I thought it was very interesting because um, I know a lot of people who haven't uh, met colorblind people before or uh, more specifically, um, you know, artists who are colorblind. Uh, it can be very interesting and they have a lot of questions for you. So um, do you want to just talk a little bit about uh, you being colorblind and that as in, uh, you know, being an artist that is colorblind? Uh, well, uh, sure. It's uh well, first of all, I'm uh, red, green, colorblind, which is the uh, the most common one. Uh, my particular one, I forget the uh, specific name, but it's uh, it's an emphasis uh, of not being able to uh, dis- uh, see green properly. I can still see red; it's just kind of kind of muted for me. But green might as well be you know, might as well be mud to me. Um, yeah. Uh, with that, uh, whenever I'm, I'm coloring anything, I, I have to rely heavily on, uh, you know, different tools and, and, um, just rules of coloring, uh, color theory to, to, uh, help me, to help me out. If, well, the, the most basic thing, of course, if my computer is telling me that, you know, this is red, then I have trusted that it's red. Um, I also, uh, <laughs> with just, uh, practice and experience, um, and, you know, asking other people to, to help me out, I, I, I have, uh, certain, uh, limits that I put on myself when I'm when I'm saturating a uh, drawing with a certain color, so I don't go beyond it. Because while a particular red or a particular green might uh, might look uh, inoffensive to me, uh, someone else in my uh, with with normal vision would be would find it glaring. So, yeah, it's I, I basically work with a lot of rules and a lot of guidelines, so so uh, so I can color things properly. Mm-hmm. it's funny that you bring that up uh, mm-hmm. like how a bright color you know like will come off is like way too bright to people because like we we gave that a real hard time in our oc episode of like like saturation looks awful like don't use it and it's like i almost feel bad because it's like well what if i can't tell if it's saturated it's like well then we didn't mean to offend you <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i'm sure you didn't take offense when we said like if, if i'm sure you know if people came up to you and you're like wow these you know 
th this is a really weird red you chose. I'm, I'm sure if they didn't know you were colorblind, you could probably be like, yeah, I'm colorblind. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, so <laughs> if, if you guys don't mind, uh, uh, a few years back when uh, me and my buddy were doing the webcomic, just uh, we were doing it in black and white. Um, we, we actually did a, uh, a, an issue where he, the, the whole point was, well, why isn't the is these issues in, in, in color? So he basically um, asked uh, asked me to uh, draw uh, draw one of the panels in the most gaudy, god awful color scheme I can come up with. So <laughs> so I did. You know, the point was, you know, because our artist is colorblind, right? So I did yeah. uh, as he asked. I tried to pick the most <laughs> gaudy, god awful, glaring colors that I could. But when it was all said and done, he looked at he looked at it. And he he was asking me, well, you know what? This is uh, this looks great, but. Why did you give uh, Tina one of the characters? Why did you give Tina a normal color scheme? Her her hair is you know brown. I'm like, that's brown. I thought it was purple. <laughs> <laughs> so in trying to mess her up, I actually made her look normal. Yeah, that's great. That's a good story. That's mm -hmm. great. So that's I know really you, you were talking with us a little bit about it beforehand, um, and you were talking about you know you rely heavily on things like the eyedropper yeah for for ponies like uh, uh i know we we mentioned lyra where you know for her she could just be gray uh no different than octavia in a lot of ways um so that is heavily done with eyedroppers right is that every yeah. is everything's eyedroppers in that case uh uh yes and no i mean if, if i can find a uh if I'm working with cartoons, that makes it easy because the eyedropper can, at the very least, give me an idea of what color I'm working with. If it's a subtle color, I'll be able to, to eyedrop it and my computer will tell me, okay, this color is this color. Once I know what it is, I can I can play around with it to make sure it, you know, it, it fits with the with, with what I'm working with because uh, you know, I do have to edit uh, uh, the, the color schemes to, to make things stand out or, or, or mute them or whatever, but that's I mean, neither here nor there. My problem is is when I'm working with something that's a, a, a photo or a picture because the eyedropper doesn't really work all that well because uh, I'm sure if you guys uh, ever played around with uh, the eyedropper in Photoshop off of a photo, you'll try to get a color off of a person, you know, with a normal, normal uh, uh, um, light skin tone. But Photoshop is insisting that it's purple. <laughs> and, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I know yeah. that can't be right. No, it's yeah. picking up like a shadow or a slight variation. <laughs> so, yeah, photos just don't work. I, at those, I have to just guess and hope for the best. Right. Or call someone over and yeah. be like, look, is this What color awful? is this? Help me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it adds like is a layer of really uh, complexity, I suppose. <laughs> it normally wouldn't be there. It's yeah, funny because... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, yeah, sometimes I just cheat. I just say, you know what, I, I have, I, I know that this color is probably, you know, this is a skin tone of some sort, it's light skin, so I'm just going to go with my default skin tone for that and call it a day. I, I, you know, I have to. There's just no way around it there. Your your issues with color being colorblind at all, it would have made this, um, that one that we mentioned earlier, that Lyra's winter night piece, would have made that real hard because Lyra herself is green. And there's a lot of green in this picture, with like the trees and the ground and little different shadings and shades of it. Yeah, I had so to. it would have it would have added another level of complexity to that. Yeah, but thankfully, it's uh, since it's uh, uh, at night, I was able to uh, cheat and put in. Um, well, for example, on the grass, if I recall correctly, I actually put in uh, a blue into a lot of the uh, mm -hmm. the shade areas to to make it look shaded. And and with the trees. Um, uh, I was able to put in to use uh, uh, purples for the shade areas there. So, um, you know, if if everything uh, you know came together uh, as it should, it'll make you know, her green stand out. I mean, again, to me, it, it looks okay, but I I can't say for certain. But mm -hmm. it, tr trusting the guidelines that I'm following, yeah, it's sh it, mixing in all those extra colors with the with the uh, with just a green uh, goes a long way with with helping contrast everything. But uh, yeah, I'm trusting everyone when they tell me it's green, and yeah, yeah, Lyra's green, right? Technically, it's <laughs> no, teal. No, she's yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> teal. She's oh, green. My goodness. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting yeah. because you, you mentioned that that you really liked her as a character. Um, yeah. Which was which was interesting because from what I've heard about a lot of different artists, you know, it, oh. it definitely skews perspectives of which ponies you would like, even based on color scheme. Like because you see blues 
much more easily than you would see say reds as you were talking about yeah you would tend to skew yourself more towards ponies that are blue because it just looks better to you yeah it just looks it just looks brighter to me yeah uh with lyra it's just um i i guess i was just uh, i i just gravitated to uh her her design um despite the colors it's just uh, i like the uh, the streak in her mane and her tail and you know mm-hmm. everything's nice and to, well to me everything's nice and, and lightly uh, colored it's not uh, it's not glaring nothing's glaring to me there mm. so uh, if she is no she does well, have a very soft heel <laughs> no, okay no, she, uh, she's 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 yeah. a bit glaring <laughs> <laughs> no, no she's not so, so yeah just uh I, I like that about her. It's just a nice, uh, nice soft colors, and that uh, nice little touch on her mane and her tail really go a long way for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's been a lot of documented cases where, you know, Docu- Pinkie Pie is a really interesting one mm-hmm. because uh, for colorblind people, it completely changes things like the personality of Pinkie Pie and how much she stands out. Because uh, maybe not so much for you, because like you said, you've got a little bit of red there. Um, but for people who are completely red green colorblind, she just becomes a gray, which is yeah. so much different. And she looks like she just fits in with her sisters, which is completely not red at all. You know, it'd be her right. personality becomes irony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, what's your what's your opinion of Pinkie Pie? That sounds like a really weird question, but trust oh, me, I, it's not. Uh, actually, uh, choose well, your words I love carefully. Pinkie Pie. Um, and yeah, I can tell she's pink. I can tell she there there's this pink there, so that's not an issue. But. Uh, yeah, I, I love her. She, uh, she, she's a very happy. Uh, anytime I need to to smile, I just look at Pinkie Pie, and it's all good. Don't we all? Good. <laughs> oh. we, we do. And, you know, and I no like one will that, say anything um, bad because Pink, Pinkie Dash doesn't totally have weapons pointed at us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like that Lyra piece, by the way. I just wanted to sneak that in there. I like it. Thank you. Because yeah, it's like. One of the few pieces of Lyra I know where she's like playing her like Lyra peacefully and she's not freaking out about humans or hands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's actually I, using I her don't. magic to play her Lyra, which is like a totally reasonable solution. I, I neither yeah. understand nor nor admittedly do I like the whole obsession with with humans. I don't know where it came from, and I, it's, it's I, just cute to have like kind of that crossover. I feel, but then again, I'm just a big fan of yeah, like I don't that. Know. And what is it? The um. An- no, 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 the, the song. Yeah. Or... Anthropology song. What? So like, there's a Lyra I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, oh okay. I don't know. It's really well... cute. She just sings about <laughs> anthropology. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was going to agree with you, like, customer. I, I personally, Lyra's my favorite background pony. She's one of my favorite ponies. Um, Probably biased because I, I've read background pony. Um, but... Uh, oh, jeez. She's, she's definitely... Let's not go into that, please. <laughs> no, um, no, we can, we can stop. We, we can skip that. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I really like the character. But I agree. I, I don't get the whole hands thing. Um, it, it's... I think it it deeply rooted. It came from the whole... The fact that she sits like a human. And then someone took that and, and made it... with it. And just, like, made it into this mm-hmm. huge thing. Yeah. It's and, it, and it becomes one of those things in the fandom that you kind of, like, hear about it so often. It just, it's, it's like a tired concept to me, you're, at least. You're full of bunk. I think it's fun. Honestly, <laughs> dude. Nah, it's boring. <laughs> no, you're bunk. I can agree that you Late are customer bunk. and I are going to go off and, and to have our own chat. No, 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 and, and it's going to be <laughs> full, of, full of hate and, and disapproval. Dorpy, climb inside my return. Sorry. I thought of that. Dorpy. <laughs> Uh, so I want to bring up if we're, if we're done talking about Lyra, even though we're she's never adorable. done talking about Lyra. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but go on. I, I wanted to bring up your the piece of fan art that you did for us. Sure. Um, the first one, just because uh, of the way that you do hair, and I feel like it's it's really evident in this piece, especially with like um, Rainbow Plasma's hair. Um. It's just like the the smaller lines, like you were saying, for the details in the the hair, but it it kind of gives it that strandedness. Like, um, uh, I don't really know if I have a question. I just I just really like the way that you do the the hair strands and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. think I do spend a little bit more time that is healthy trying to uh, uh, draw the, uh, the the manes on on the bones. So. I can warp that into a question. Did you develop that <laughs> style from like? starting through your comic base or was that something you kind of developed for pony specifically uh the hair thing was um i i was doing it um i was doing very little of that in, in the uh, in the web comics to uh 
to give the the characters a little bit more uh, definition and style. But when a, again, due to uh, time constraints, I can only do so much. Uh, when I started drawing uh, ponies, I uh, I, I kind of got carried away and ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if, you, if you guys don't mind me uh, bringing it up uh, on no, the uh, sleeping Pinkie Pie, it's the most epic. Yeah, that I, yeah, I spent a lot of time trying to get the mane to look just you know just right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, did you? Well, there was like an animation of that done. Was that done by you or a fan? Um, there's an animation of this. Yeah, there's an animation wait, wait, where wait. someone photoshopped the feather, put the background behind it perfect, and then um, photoshopped again Pinkie Pie snoring and blowing the feather up and down. Have you seen that? I have I haven't, I haven't seen not that. seen that. It's I fantastic. Have no idea. Yeah, she um they drew like Pinkie Pie breathing, gummy breathing, and then the feather was like blowing up and down. It was really cool. So she's Damn like it burns. Now we're never going to be able to find that. Link it burns. I really got to Google it up. <laughs> uh, I, I was aware someone did a little sculpture of it, and uh, someone was kind enough to extend it to, uh, to a wallpaper size. So, I, And I put those in my uh, in, in the description of the drawing. I had no idea someone. Apparently, see, uh, apparently someone animated it. <laughs> yeah, apparently now we got to like hunt this down. Yeah. Yeah, we did not have a link already, like, planned out. Just burned. <laughs> God, God, loser. <laughs> I saw it, like, once forever ago on, like, Reddit or something. Oh, yeah. I, I think oh, I think right. I remember oh, that as well. I'm find this myself. Right. I'm so curious. I'll pop up a Google image search. Yeah. So, so while, while, you're, while you're Googling that, you strange individual, um, <laughs> I want to ask another question, and, it, and it's both evident in, in, you know, the two pieces that we just brought up, the, the CAC fan art and then the, the Pinkie Pie one. Um, both of them have really heavy lighting, and that's not something easily done, and it's also not something that a lot of people like to do. Um, you, you know, what, what's, your, what's your experience with lighting? Was that something that, that was one of the last things for you to kind of figure out? Uh, actually, that's uh, real talk. That's me cheating. Uh, since I have trouble <laughs> with, uh, with, with, with colors, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I use, uh, uh, lighting to, uh, um, well, put people, uh, to, to kind of even the playing field with me. So, you know, if, if, if I, if something is, um, in, in a dark, in a dark area, then the colors get muted. So, you know, if, if colors are already muted by default to me, well, the, the easiest way for me to handle that and to hide that is to well draw uh, things in, in, in darkly illuminated areas it's, that's uh i'm being long-winded i uh, I, I guess what i'm trying to say is actually lighting is a lot easier for me because i'm colorblind uh i can focus on as burns would say value yeah. rather than focusing on you know the the, the bright colors it, it, that i will say it's, it comes easier to me hmm. interesting <laughs> do, do, do you think that you um started focusing on it more because it gave you that advantage and so you said oh look this uh, this this really helps so why don't i try doing this uh or did that all kind of come naturally for you it, it kind of came, came naturally to me it's uh well I, as i said it's uh i didn't do it uh um it, it wasn't conscious at first but then i realized yeah all my all my uh all my drawings that have this particular uh lighting well, at least to me, look a lot, and to actually some of my friends, they look a lot better than the ones that I have in, you know, nice, bright, uh, 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 nice and bright uh, light. So I kind of do lean towards uh, having uh, heavy contrast in, in lighting. Hmm. hmm. Well, you, you do it That's really cool. well, which is why I brought it up. Um, you Thank know, you. The, the, the one where you had us staring at a computer monitor what was really great just the way that you had that kind of directed light source and how all the shadows played with each other so you know it's evident that you've spent a lot of time learning that kind of stuff because those shadows were definitely something that stood out to me the second that somebody told me that you know this was a fan art piece of us um you know i looked at that and i went whoa that's really uh, uh, amazing lighting mm -hmm. oh, thanks um, <laughs> actually uh the, the if anyone's actually uh curious in, in to how they can figure this out for themselves. It's uh, look at a lot of. Um, there, there's two ways that I that I uh, trained myself to do it uh, more regularly. Uh, on one hand, look at look at any cartoon that's cell shaded and just uh, watch to see where uh, the animators um, decide to put the, the 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 line distinction from one color to another. 
And uh, I had a couple of people on DeviantArt asking me with notations. I, I just tell them the same thing. But they, they tell me that they don't know where to uh, put the um, the dividing line, as it were, for, for light to dark. Uh, just have a very strong light source, like a flashlight or something handy, and just shine it on your hand or shine it on a on a plushie or something, and you'll clearly see uh, a highly illuminated area, and immediately followed by by the dark area. And there you go. There's your there's your hard lining. That's your that's that's how you condition your eye to see these lines. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. Um, that's cool. So it's it's very reflective of r- the real world, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what yeah. is it? Late. Cool. Uh, well. Late or not? Excuse me. Late because we're really <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, positive <laughs> to say, like, if you want to learn like shading and value, like shadow spheres is one of the best things you can paint or like draw. And then um, ponies are basically just shadow spheres with legs because they're so round. Yep. So it's like that hard shading comes naturally because you like you take with a very bright light that um, line becomes very defined. Um, but you can you know round off that line or kind of like take the center of it, you know, and turn that into a hard shading um, or a very bright light on a shadow sphere will create, you know, that very distinct shading. Yeah, I also noticed that a lot of artists um, actually do their um, I guess you'd call it natural shading where it, you know, has a has a, a natural fade to it. Uh, one of the artists that was asking me about the the, well, the, the cell shading, if, if that's what you want to call it, um, yeah, they, they, they don't know how, how to do it. And I looked at their own gallery and Oh, they're doing natural shading already. I'm like, well, dude, you, you're already doing half the work there. Just what you're doing is a <laughs> lot more difficult. Just find, just just find the the in between area, and you, and you got it. Um, the next thing I knew, he he was uh, doing some cell shading drawings and he's looking pretty fine to me. Hmm. I, I find the the soft shading to be more difficult to be to be honest. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I I agree. Um, you know. It, Soft shading is a very difficult thing to do, but it's kind of everyone's natural incl- inclination. Um, yeah. w- with hard shading, you get to define the bounds of the shadow a little bit better. And so yes. um, with soft shading, it's so much more general, you know? You can do some yeah. very cool things with it, like you can see in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, uh, nice. For the record, I apologize for the horn. Mm-hmm. I, uh, <laughs> I-, I was trying to make it in, in, in the main, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, uh, yeah, I kind of... Is that, <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that's okay. is that still a thing? Is that still a thing? Because it keeps getting brought up. Even oh, to are people day, still it it, talking it, about that joke? <laughs> it will haunt you uh, forever, <laughs> basically. Yeah. As, soon as, people, as soon as you stop talking about it, other people stop talking. What's really I funny is like talking about it for six months. <laughs> we have a little, uh, we have a little group text. Speaking of like no. memes in the show, we have a little group uh, text thing that we all text each other. Um, to like coordinate the show and talk to each other and like just a few days ago you texted us all like look what i just bought at the store and it's this big tub of like cookie dough ice cream and you're just like texting us like it's so glorious like eating it It is okay wait did couldn't it's you like so not good. find it and then you had to go to some other store apparently to... this is this is or now a story time um <laughs> but here's the deal that's the, that's perfectly fine people could be like haha you like cookie dough ice cream and i'll be like yeah Duh. Uh, it's delicious because it's, it's delicious. It's yeah. delicious. <laughs> the thing, the thing with the horn thing is, it's just like that was a joke I made. It's not actually. I don't actually care. Um, well, hey, at least it's a joke you made and not someone made of you. <laughs> burn, burn, burn! That comment wasn't very valuable. <laughs> it's, t- it's tiny uh, horn as a joke. Uh, poor burn. <laughs> well, the if I made that uh, the drawing with uh, um. Caramel Curve and uh, and Rainbow Plasma singing and playing the piano. That came precisely because that's something you guys were talking about oh, yeah, in yeah. the chat. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> He's um, a great singer. yeah. By the way, that's that's an amazing piece. Thanks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised no one latched onto. I believe it was um, uh, Pinky Dash who said, <laughs> "I'm sorry," uh, who said uh, <laughs> that he was eating a uh, Flutter guy. I'm like, oh, someone's gonna draw that, and I never saw anything from that. There's a fan art piece of me eating Rainbow Plasma's face. Uh, I'm sorry? There is a fan art piece of me eating Rainbow Plasma's face. This has gotten far too out of control. Way out of control. Slipping out of my grasp um, quickly. Back on task, whatever that Uh, may be. Actually, I do have something to link it a little bit back on task. I did find that animation of your piece. It's actually a dude on Reddit named Animate My Art or something. What is his name? Animate Your Pictures is his name. Thank you for finding this. That's really good. 
Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, called cool. user cool. I animate your pictures. <laughs> Straight up yeah. on Reddit. There you go. <laughs> that's, pretty That's pretty cool. <laughs> I wanted to bring up uh, just one more thing. I don't know if we're running short on time, but uh, going back to, to our fan art piece, and then also you have uh, a piece with Octavia. Um, I'll link it in the chat. Um, and another fan art piece, which is burned uh in front of the microphone uh i just i really love the way that you do expressions oh, thank you. um <laughs> just uh like in our in our first fan art piece that was like actually one of the first comments like when we got this and we were all looking at it it's like you know yeah that's exactly how all of us would react <laughs> like uh the the expressions are just so clearly defined um I, does that like kind of also come from having worked in comics like uh are expressions a big part of drawing comics yeah you need to uh well you're drawing still pictures so anytime you want to express anything you you need to really exaggerate uh, the expressions or the body language so yeah just i spend a lot of time trying to uh get expressions right and to be honest uh i don't quite get it uh 100 percent uh accurate when uh, when i'm drawing the webcomic now and then but um yeah it's just Lots of practice drawing uh, expressions, and smiling, angry, yelling, what have you. Uh, that that comes from what you know, studying cartoons and studying um, again things like Calvin and Hobbes or any other uh, uh, comic that has uh, great expressions in them. Just lots of practice. Hmm. Look cool. at me! I'm so happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is definitely something that we looked yeah, at when are. we got it, and and, and uh, it was it was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, Pinky Dash's expression is just priceless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at that makes him so damn heavy. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm looking at the at the camera. I don't know where you guys. Are. Oh. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh, that's that's funny. Funny. Okay, so uh-huh. we are running a little bit low on time. So we just like to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I know we had a lot of fun, and uh, you gave some really interesting. Um, uh, points to think about uh, for sure and uh you know thank you thank you for coming on and putting up with people who once again have brought up I your color blindness <laughs> <Not long. laughs> because i'm sure i'm sure that gets a little bit tiring no oh, it's not uh, last thing for the plugs not just uh, the webcomic i also got uh we also have someone who's a really talented writer who who does um uh, interviews with uh people in the video game industry as well as uh gaming reviews uh, i would highly recommend you guys check them out uh on the Dire Man page, it's uh, called Software uh, Slump. Um, yeah, really, have a read. Huh. He, he's really talented. Maybe I will. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a threat? Uh, I'll hold you to that next time we're playing League. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare bring up League of Legends in this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, okay, forget it. I mean, we were going to be friends. We had something going here, late customer, <laughs> but you know, I think I think this isn't going to work out. So don't call me; I'll call you. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I guess I'm just going to hang out with Burn then. <laughs> yeah, play some League of Legends. All right. Yeah. <laughs> can I? Uh, can, good times. Can I? Can I just? Can I join you yes. guys? Yes, you may. I don't really play, but you can be our friend. Actually, I think my my account expired or something. So did mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they cleaned up whole. I'll go names. play Minecraft then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be by myself in Minecraft. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank uh-huh. you for being a fan. Coming on. We're trying um, to finish this podcast yes. for the last Thanks half an hour. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I just, <laughs> I just I wanted to end it on thanking you for, for coming on the podcast and, and thank you for the fan art, especially. And thank you for having me because uh, we didn't we didn't really uh, ever closely thank you for uh, that that kind of fan art, um, and it's uh, really awesome uh, to see. So hmm. it's my pleasure. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> Vern, Vern, you're, you're, you're a bit creepy again. I just thought I'd tell you. Oh, okay, goodness. so if that if right. that's everything that you guys want to say, we're we're all good. Let's let's go into plugs. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. All good. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Okay. So we have a DeviantArt page, which is cutiacrusaders.deviantart.com. Go there to check out any of late customers' work from today that we're going to put on our page. Plus. Yay previous episodes and stuff we haven't shown from previous episodes, etc., etc. Um, our personal pages are on there as well if you want to contact us for any reason. Um, we have an email, which is kiyakrusaders at gmail.com. Please send in any questions you've got for us to ask of any future guests if we announce them, plus future episodes, that sort of stuff. Any, anything 
Um, yeah, like I said last week, please, more art questions, not... I mean, more art questions rather than us questions, because we like talking about art rather than us. Mm-hmm. Um, and please put these, uh, whatever you're sending us in the subject line. So if it's questions, questions. If it's art, put art, etc., etc. We have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Crusaders. You can go there, give us a like. Uh, we'll provide information on the day of a stream, basically when it's streaming, what the theme is and stuff like that. Uh, and we have a Twitter, which is at QDR Crusade. You can go there, follow us, uh, you tweet at us. I don't know. Whatever you do on Twitter. <laughs> um, and we'll provide, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll provide up to the minute information on stream stuff. And yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, can, you can come hang out with us on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern um, for yes. our live streams, which like, like customer, I know you're a part of, which is awesome. Try to make it everyone I can. Mm-hmm. You, you, you like to come come to the chat and hang out, which is really cool. I show up now and then. Yeah. <laughs> <Poor bird. laughs> I'm there occasionally. Really. And then we have the YouTubes. What's burned? Yeah, Burn, you want to talk about the YouTubes? Come on. Yeah. Uh, feel Stick free to comment on our YouTube page because I'm the only one who reads them. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> I totally read them last week. That's just because they were saying you're a sexy man. <laughs> for the, for the, it's true for the first time in three months <laughs> oh, uh, oh, man, oh, man. well I mean unfortunately I mean this is going so well <laughs> and this is def- <laughs> definitely not at all a mess of an ending of a show but um, yeah we, we're going to have to end it off here I know you guys want us to see a little bit longer but um, we'll, we leave you wanting for more next week okay and um, so, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks again, League Customer, for coming on. You were a pleasure to have. And uh, we look forward to more art from you in the future. Uh, it was my pleasure. N- not about us. That sounded really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just meant in general. I just... Well, if you, Say what if you, you want. want, want yeah. Why, whatever, man. <laughs> I just meant in general. I just meant in general. Uh, narcissism. Yeah. Yeah. More my pony, not art. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you guys for okay. coming. Whether or not you're on the live stream on YouTube, we love you all the yeah, same. Soon. My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm Myrna One. I'm Photoguy317. I'm Mickey Dash. I'm the customer. And that was the hey. smoothest ending of all time. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> you just messed it up. You just See it. you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.